In the previous section, we talked about how data could be divided into training and testing partitions for evaluation. Here, we're using the top half for training and the bottom half for testing. Although you could imagine we could just as easily flip that and have used the bottom half for training and the top half for testing. Doing this would allow us to actually train twice and test twice, so that might give us a better idea of how our method is performing, although the models each time would be different. So we could extend this, so instead of thinking about sort of flipping the training and testing intervals, we could actually have four different sections. So here I've divided the data into four pieces, and each piece could be assigned an, uh, an identity, so one, two, three, and four. So we could divide our data up like this, and then we could evaluate a method where we train on three quarters of the data and test on the remaining fourth. So for instance, we could train on two, three, and four and test on one. We could also train on one, three, and four and test on two. So we could do this across each interval. And this is an approach called cross-validation that we'll talk about in this session. So let's go back to our data. So previously we used these data for our holdout set. Here we're going to use them for cross-validation. So these are the same data that you've been introduced to before, and we're going to divide each one into an interval. The interval will be shown as the outer ring. For instance, the point on the far left is an interval two, which is shown by the green ring. What we then do to assess our method is we remove the examples that are in our testing interval. So if we're testing interval one, we remove the genes that have red circles around them, the ones in that interval. We then build a model on the remaining genes. So for instance, we have the red model here. So this is the model built for the testing interval one. We can then gray out the genes that we no longer care about, the ones that we used for training, and look only at the red genes. So these are the genes that weren't used for training. From these, we can evaluate the performance of the model. In this case, all the red genes in orange are on one side of the line, and the red genes in blue are on the other side of the line. And therefore, in this interval, this achieved 100% accuracy on the test set. We can then repeat the same process for each of the intervals. For instance, here for interval two, we remove the green genes, and then we build a model. We will show this as the green model, because this is the model built for interval two. We then disregard the accuracy on the training genes and use only the accuracy on the held out genes. And here you can see we achieved an 83% accuracy on this interval. We've now tested the first interval in red, which achieved 100% accuracy, and the second interval in green, which achieved 83% accuracy. We can then continue through each of the following intervals. Here's the purple interval, and here's the gray interval. And so at the end of this process, what we've generated is for each interval a testing accuracy. And the strength of cross-validation is that we've been able to use all examples for testing. So at the end of this, we've been able to use every example for testing. We can then put these accuracies into a table and calculate the mean value of that table to estimate performance on remaining examples. So in this case, uh, the mean is about 96%, so we can say we think the accuracy of this model going forward would be about 96%. So the challenge that we have with cross-validation is that now we have four models. We have a gray model, a green model, a purple model, and a red model. And we have to reconcile these models when we apply them to new points. There are many ways to do this. One of the commonly used ways is to take the average prediction for each of the unlabeled points across all models. So if a point is in the cross-validation intervals, you assign it the value that it achieved in its test set. If it's not in any of the labeled examples, you assign it the average across every interval. In this case, there would be two points that would be classified the, using the average method, the one on the left as orange and the one on the right as blue, and these are classified clearly because they're consistent across each of the models. For this point on the bottom, the gray model predicts that it should be a blue point, while the remaining three models predict that it would be an orange point. In this case, we need some sort of method to resolve this. We can choose the approach that we think best fits our situation. For instance, here, if this is strict binary classification and we need a yes-no answer, we could use a majority vote. If we did a majority vote here, this point would be considered orange. But this raises one of the challenges of cross-validation we have to reconcile the multiple models that are trained. So to, to review cross-validation one more time, the benefit of it is we get to use all our points for training and all our points for testing. The downside of it is we then have to reconcile the remaining models.